Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, on this wonderful Wednesday for what is going to be another jam-packed daily cryptocurrency market update presented by yours truly, All In Crypto. We have a lot to get into, as always. Uh, and if you are finding yourself on my channel for the first time today and you're not already a subscriber, please do consider becoming one. We drop an update just like this one around 1 p.m. UK time every single day to help you guys stay up to date with the latest and greatest things happening in the crypto space, but also the broader markets. And we've got some monstrous news to share with you in regards to Bitcoin. Today, um, we are going to be looking at how the state of Wisconsin has actually disclosed that it has a $162 million worth of Bitcoin in their pension fund. Um, now, this is huge because pension funds and the funds that they manage is around about $24 trillion, which is 2x plus larger than BlackRock itself. And we are starting to see the dominoes fall. We've seen so many companies, whether it be the uh, biggest bank in Switzerland, the fourth largest bank in Canada, um, the third largest bank in uh, Germany, all come out and disclose that they actually own BlackRock's iShares or some of the other Bitcoin spot ETFs. And this is huge. This is a trend that we are going to be looking at. We also have news that Vanguard, who have vowed to never allow a Bitcoin spot ETF, actually have just hired the very guy that got a Bitcoin spot ETF through the door who used to work at BlackRock as their new CEO. And we're going to be listening to what he says. He also brings up the fact that when they allowed gold at BlackRock to have an ETF, um, it did a similar thing to what they're doing with Bitcoin. And actually, we'll look at the trajectory that gold then went on after an ETF was applied or uh, enabled by BlackRock. Bitcoin very much uh, on a similar trajectory. Um, so some really interesting news there. We'll play a clip from, of course, Salim Ramji, who is the new CEO of Vanguard, the company that was previously against Bitcoin. We also got news in regards to the Ethereum spot ETF uh, from the SEC, which we're going to be diving into to start the video off. Then, of course, it's CPI day. We'll look at some charts because risk seems to have bottomed. And we did speculate on this. You know, we've had a bit of a pullback on a strong dollar on the back end of inflation fears. Um, but we do have the CPI today. And of course, we had Jerome Powell speaking yesterday. So a hell of a lot to get into. Let's get into it all, guys. And let's start things off with some Ethereum spot ETF news. So this is from Scott Johnson. I'm aware this is widely considered a possibility, but this is your official notice that the SEC is considering the security question for ETH in this up and coming spot ETF order. Note that this question was never um, asked regarding a spot or futures Bitcoin ETF products. They never brought the security question up with Bitcoin. However, they are likely, based on his findings, going to be bringing it up against Ethereum. So it says the commission is providing notice of the grounds for disapproval under consideration. This is the first bit. And then this is the second. Given the nature of the underlying asset held by the trust, has the exchange properly filed its proposal to list and trade the shares under the NASDAQ rules, commodity-based trust shares? So what they're essentially hinting at here is, have they filed it under commodity, not security? Because Bitcoin is um, obviously not a security. The futures didn't go down as SFPs. Also, Ethereum futures, which have been enabled, are not SFP, security uh, futures products. So Interesting. I, I think they're going to stall on an Ethereum ETF. Um, we've seen adjustments to the ETFs. Just some interesting news. Really good find from Scott Johnson over here. Let's talk about some huge news involving BTC. And it's another domino to fall. Just in the state of Wisconsin, Investment Broad discloses it holds almost $100 million of BlackRock spot Bitcoin ETF. You can see Willie Wu, the famous on-chain analyst for Bitcoin, saying, to put this into perspective, pension funds manage... $24 trillion in assets. This is more than 2x bigger than BlackRock or roughly equivalent to all the US dollars in the world. This is from the Bitcoin archive. Now that the pension fund manager of State Wisconsin has disclosed $162 million in Bitcoin allocation, it's only a matter of time before every single state pension fund manager makes the same. I wouldn't say every, but a lot of them will. Um, just like we've seen a lot of the largest banks in the world actually move towards allocating Bitcoin. It makes sense from a portfolio management point of view. Then every university endowment, every family office, every wealth manager, fund manager, every corporate treasury. Bitcoin is a bug um, and it is completely taking hold. Some interesting news in regards to Vanguard, who have previously vowed to never allow a Bitcoin spot ETF. 
Vanguard just hired the guy who handled the Bitcoin spot ETF for BlackRock as its CEO. You can see Eric Balanchunas also commenting on all of this. Uh, Salim Ramji, definitely saying that wrong, by the way, will be the new Vanguard CEO. He used to head up BlackRock's global ETF business. First time ever Vanguard hired outsider as a CEO. Every other one was an internal star and former uh, Boggle assistant. Um, very, very interesting. This actually broke on Bloomberg Terminal. I want to go over and play a clip of Salim actually talking about Bitcoin when he was asked previously. Uh, and then we'll look at what happened with gold once it had an ETF approved as he brings it up and the fact that Bitcoin is very much on a similar trajectory. Just another reason to be bullish on Bitcoin. We looked at ISM manufacturing index yesterday and the kind of four year cycles that goes on and how it's very correlated to Bitcoin, a good fundamental narrative economically to be bullish on Bitcoin. And we've looked at multiple technical reasons, fundamental reasons. When something walks, talks and quacks like a duck, it's a duck. Let's dive into this clip. Yes. With you, but we have to start with the Bitcoin filing, <laughs> of, course. of course. BlackRock really made waves and then some with that mid-June filing, refiling for a spot Bitcoin ETF. And I think we've all learned a lot about surveillance sharing agreements in the past <laughs> right. couple of weeks. Right. I want to talk about the fact that it's a partnership with Coinbase. Why is Coinbase the right partner here? Well, uh, Kitty, and you'll forgive me because I'm limited in what I can say uh, because there is a live filing around it. And so let me try and answer your question okay. with two broader uh, answers. Uh, which is the first one is that the underlying technology that underpins Bitcoin and the blockchain technology is something we're incredibly excited about. And we're incredibly excited about it because it removes frictions or at least has the promise of removing frictions across the ecosystem. Uh, and for us in the role that we play, uh, which is all about how do you take out friction in the ecosystem, whether it's a custodian, whether it's a, a trading in settlement times, uh, I think the underpinnings are really, really powerful for us. So that really sparked our interest in this whole area uh, mm -hmm. a number of years ago. And the second thing is all about access. So nearly 20 years ago, uh, we launched our gold ETFs. Mm. Uh, and the gold is held in custody in a vault, uh, uh, which is remote from us, but it's now easier to transact in gold using our gold ETFs. And we're applying that same philosophy to other new and emerging asset classes like Bitcoin, uh, just as we did to gold 20 years ago, just as we did to bond 20, bonds 20 years ago. So I know that doesn't answer your question, um, but, uh, but we really just see this as about uh, how do we embrace new technologies that are trying to reduce friction and how do we help investors gain access uh, to parts of the market that had otherwise been more difficult or really expensive or opaque for them to access otherwise? Very interesting. Now, he is now the CEO of Vanguard, who have been kind of against the Bitcoin spot ETF. Um, the world is moving towards Bitcoin. I, I, I can't help but feel like it's too good to be true. We'll cover Bitcoin in just a second. But what I want to show you is he spoke about when gold had a uh, ETF approved and we'll actually look at that so we're very bullish on gold um for a number of reasons that we've previously spoken about we can get rid of volume and the 30 week moving average here but this is 2004 and let's put it on a monthly time frame to really sort of make this make sense this is when they approved a spot gold etf this was likely the run-up with people knowing what was coming in accumulation of it and then this is the run that it went on after bitcoin very likely to do a similar thing in my opinion and really push on higher and go significantly up I'm not saying 500,000 or anything like that remember we've got technical targets to 100 and sort of uh, 50,000 uh, and then I do think it's likely going to go above and beyond certainly as we continue to see the devaluation of the dollar Bitcoin is the fastest horse in this race but certainly interesting news let's talk about risk and how it may have bottomed and uh, if we look at what we've got coming up we've got CPIs um, we had PPIs yesterday. They came out slightly higher than expensive, but the revised ones from last time paint a, a slightly different story. Everyone's been very worried about inflation. I've actually came out and said, no, I'm not that worried about inflation at all. Um, I actually think that inflation's going sideways at worst and down at best. I don't think we're seeing that resurgence and that second spike like everybody's talking about. They're looking at historical context of when we've had second spikes previously under high inflation. I think there's a lot of different... Um, factors at play at the moment and certainly going to summer things like this uh, and i think inflation is going to continue to decrease it's going to be interesting to see what this print is a lower print is going to see the markets do well a higher one isn't going to see the markets i don't think tank maybe initially um but until we see that second spike of inflation not just this sideways period which we're currently living through then there's no need i don't think to panic so this is going to be interesting i do think risk studded or likely has turned bitcoin very much just been in a flag style uh, pattern if we look at something like ethereum the flag is a lot more evident and it's kind of uh, restricting here. I do think you're likely going to get a bounce and a break off this flag and a uh, resumption of the trend. We did look at the um, S&P and where that was currently at. I do think this is very 
in a short succession of time. Um, we looked at this broadening channel. We said you had broken it. Expect higher prices. You're going to take new all-time highs for the S&P and see that continuation. And if we look at total two, very much now squaring up uh, and hopefully going to set up that right shoulder in um, what is a big inverse head and shoulders that is going to see uh, the altcoin market get to $3.7 trillion, which is well over a 3x from where we currently are. You had Jerome Powell speaking yesterday. Fed Chair Powell says inflation has been higher. Then, ex then thought, expect rates to hold steady. Uh, and markets don't do too bad under high rates. We've been going through a readjustment on the back end of inflation. I think that broader trend that we were in before we started to readjust things will resume. I think people were too overzealous. And that's going to see the risk markets do exceptionally well. So that is it from me, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed this update as much as I enjoyed presenting it. Huge news in regards to Bitcoin. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Uh, and on that note, I'm going to love and leave you. Have a wonderful Wednesday. I'll see you all in the next one.